and there we go we finally got the win wow what a what an interesting couple games What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Now a couple of important things to announce today is the end of our uh, giveaway for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. We're giving away a draft booster box of the set today. Don't yet know who the winner is. I'm recording this a day early, so we will find out later today. But do stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna have a uh, a, a special video that uh, announces that winner and all that kind of stuff. So please do check that out later on today. But if you're not already, I do encourage you please subscribe to the channel as well. Now I know this giveaway is over, but future giveaways this is going to be a way to uh, enter subscribing to the channel. So please make sure that you do. It really does help us out, but it's also just a really good way to support the channel and you know of course enter those giveaways so uh let's talk about today's deck guys this is a mono black kind of super friends control list um that i kind of put together based off of a list by legend vd uh this is not his list i i did kind of incorporate some of my own changes to it just to kind of try some things out here uh but this is very heavily based on his list so um do you know want to credit where credit's due but I did change a number of things here to include a couple of extra planeswalkers, in particular Valky. One of my favorites, uh, Tabalt is just so good in my opinion. You're, if you can get this down late game, there's just so much you can do with it. Exiling stuff uh, from the opponent's deck, just being able to steal basically anything you need. Like It does a lot of really important things in my opinion. Uh, and so it's really nice to have this here. Now to help with this, um, we do have a number of things, of course, to kind of help us get there. All the basic stuff applies. We've got the Meat Hook Masker. We've got the Infernal Grafts, Shambling Gas, Eye Witch with that Deadly Dispute combo, and then a Warlock class here. Uh, this is hopefully going to help us out as well. Uh, now, the Celestis is going to ramp us, hopefully gain us some life, but it's also going to give us that red mana. You'll notice we do have just a couple of red lands here, but nothing too crazy. Just want to be able to get that down if we can, and that's going to hopefully help us get there. Now, for other Planeswalkers, we do have some big ones. We've got Soren the Mirthless, of course. Uh, just, again, I've talked about this a million times, but he seems so good as a quintessential Black Planeswalker, and his abilities being so on theme, in my opinion. Uh, being able to reveal some cards, losing life, yeah, sure, but you get that extra card if you want it. You've got that creature you can spit out, and then, of course, for that minus seven, you just deal 13 damage and gain 13 life. I mean, it's it's absolutely on theme, and so I'm excited to play with him. Uh, we do have Lolth, of course. Again, another very quintessential uh, kind of hits that color pie perfectly. Get to draw a card, you lose a life. You get th uh, two, excuse me, two one little reach tokens. And then, of course, that last one dealing some massive damage. And then finally, we've got Professor Onyx as well. Again, very similar. They all kind of play a similar role. Uh, however, they do it in different ways, and hopefully we'll kind of get to see that along the way. Another new card that we actually are going to get to see, in fact, I think maybe the only, not not the only new card, but basically the only new spell, uh, Invoke Despair, one of the new kind of mono black uh, tools in the arsenal here. Sorcery for four black and one, so five mana total. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, uh, they lose two life and you draw a card. Then repeat this process for both enchantments and planeswalkers. So essentially, you're going to get three triggers off of this. And potentially, you know, depending on the way that their deck is operating or what kinds of cards they have, you should be able to replace this in your hand. And so you're not necessarily losing anything in terms of card advantage and you're gaining quite a bit, hopefully. Uh, now we'll see, of course, I haven't actually played with this yet. So this is going to be a new one for us, but I'm excited to try it out. And then finally, we do have Shadows Verdict, which I know is a bit of a nonbo with Valky, but I think it'll kind of work out here. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Blood on the Snow as one of the big sweepers in the deck. Being able to bring back any of our Planeswalkers uh, is absolutely massive. So we'll see how this one pans out, guys. Again, I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me, super sold that it's going to work, you know, extraordinarily well. However, we have seen Mono Black do really well uh, in the past, and I'm excited to see if we can get it to work here. I think, uh, I think we'll have some fun with it. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, we do have a full sideboard of lessons here. 
Uh, mainly, we have two Confront the Past. That's really the only big change here. Uh, normally, there were two mascot exhibitions in the sideboard, but I felt like having uh, kind of the big Planeswalker theme, I wanted to try and see if we could bring those back. So all that to say, guys, we're going to have some fun today. Hopefully get some wins. I really do like Mono Black right now. It's been really good for a really long time. And so we're going to try out this new version today. So let's, uh, let's jump right into the games. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. This is about the perfect start, honestly. Now, we could obviously use some more land, but that Eye Witch is really going to help us out to get that. So I am going to lead on the Eye Witch here, and then we can get that Deadly Dispute up this upcoming turn. So I think we'll be in pretty good shape here. Perfect. Okay. Uh, well, and there is the other land. That's very helpful. So let's drop this down. Um, I think what we'll do is go ahead and attack in with that Eye Witch. We'll drop the Shambling Gas, so that's going to probably block out that uh, from attacking. And then we'll just go ahead and get this Warlock class. Nothing too crazy, of course, but this really sets us up for a great next turn uh, where we can start to maybe kill some things here and get around some of this. So we'll see what happens. There's another land. Uh, I mean, it's kind of exactly what we need, so I'm actually okay with that. Um... The question is, how do we want to go about this? Uh, I think... Hmm. So we can meat hook for one just to get this off the field and then kind of have this out. I don't think that's the right play. Um, uh, let's no attack, I think, for now. I think what we can do is just kind of block, uh, give ourselves the maximum amount of non-life loss that we possibly can. <laughs> Uh, and then hopefully get somewhere with this. So let's see what they actually hit here. Looks like it's going to be that Eye Witch. So what we can do is just go ahead, sacrifice it. We'll get that learn trigger. Now the question is, what do we want to get here? Um, it might just be the Necrotic Fumes. It's a great one-for-one -one answer to this. We're also drawing some cards here. So we've got some, some things we could do. Uh, now to do this, we do have to take a damage. Is that worth it? Uh, alternatively, I guess next turn we can meat hook. Um, hmm. Let's make sure we're playing very smart. So I do think we block here, and I actually think we just let this go through. What we're going to do here is uh, minus one on the Lunark Veteran to shut down that life gain, at least for now. Uh, and then at this point, we can just meat hook for three. Um, yeah, and I think that that's okay. Uh, it's not necessarily the best, most optimal play. We're kind of going about this in a roundabout way, so that might be incorrect. And in this case, I feel really silly that we did get the Necrotic Fumes because we could have just gotten like an Environmental Sciences or, you know, something along those lines. However, uh, we'll see how this actually pans out. They, they don't have a lot of pressure going. Okay, well, now they do. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's not great for us. Um... So, with that in mind, I think we do need to Warlock class here. Uh, we can get this. Uh, that's actually really helpful. So, we can throw this down. Um, I think we throw the Hive down. And at this point, we're probably going to have to take a hit from the Leonin War Leader here. But we've got that Necrotic Fumes available to us. Now, we did take that turn off. So, we're not going to have the Deadly Dispute available this turn. However, it looks like they're just playing the Sigarda Splendor. Not going to be playing a removal spell on the Shambling Gas, which does mean that we should be able to just take this hit uh, and then be able to uh, kind of deal with the Leon and War Leader. So I think we're just going to pass. Take that damage. Again, that's rough, but it's not the end of the world. There's the Invoke Despair as well. Uh, now that's actually interesting. But again, I don't think it's quite time for that yet. Uh, I think what we're going to do... So we're going to exile this. We're going to have to sack this um, in the process. And then we'll just go ahead and play that Celestis out. So now we are just kind of hanging on there for as long as we can. This Invoke Despair is going to do quite a bit theoretically, uh, but they do have a borrowed time that's just going to get rid of nothing, basically. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and so we'll see how this goes. Uh, the Lost Save Bomb. Okay. There's a Shadows Verdict, which is actually really helpful here. Um, I think we just Shadows Verdict. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. 
get everything out of there that's exiling everything as well so that's huge for us um the reason being it also gets the disturbed creatures out of the graveyard so again that's part of the reason why i wanted to include that shadows verdict just gives us some options long term now one thing to note we can sacrifice our celestis to the deadly dispute i don't encourage that at the moment <laughs> um but we certainly could uh if we felt the need i'm not necessarily sure that we need to quite yet though um any creature here is fine with me because again we can just invoke despair on it um we're gonna gain a life but thankfully these trigger prior to it actually landing and so we actually get uh some stuff there all right so i think we go for just the invoke despair right unless we could just blood on the snow because they could gain quite a bit of life this turn that is a little scary but we've got absolutely nothing to bring back which is a little unfortunate um i'm gonna go for the invoke despair here this may not be the best play uh because we are kind of risking it a little bit the safe play is definitely the blood on the snow but the reality is if we're not bringing anything back with the blood on the snow i, I don't know how likely it is to really get us where we need to be we'll see um but invoke despair is kind of a nice card we might get to draw a card off of this anyway uh in fact we will because they don't have a planeswalker um and they lose two life in that process we gain a life as well which is helpful uh, we do get another land here. Um, all right. Well, kind of surprised they got rid of the voice, actually. I suppose they're just trying to hold on to as much as they can in terms of the life gain aspect, which I think is the smart way to go. Um, however, just kind of a curious, curious thing there. Um, we'll see how this actually goes. I would love just any big planeswalker. At this point, any planeswalker would really set us above, uh, the where we need to be here and i think that that's going to be important it may be that we do need to sacrifice the celestis here as much as i don't really want to um all right yeah it's getting closer and closer to that um hmm i really wish we could just do anything um okay so um with that in mind i think we'll do this uh, I am gonna attack in here. We'll get that out of there, just so they, uh, they don't have anything too crazy going on. Get three damage in. Um, I'm actually gonna sacrifice. Uh, this may not be correct. I don't know. We're, we're just trying stuff at this point. We're still learning the deck anyway, so I don't feel terrible about this. But we did get a little bit of damage off, which is useful. <laughs> um, and we did get a Soren, which is helpful as well. So we'll see how this goes. I don't really want to lose that Celestis. All right. Yeah, very good. Uh, thankfully, we do have that blood on the snow. We were able to save that, which is huge for us. However, AO is very, very good. So they're going to be able to get some stuff out from the top of their deck if they so choose, which I'm sure they will. Um, and again, we've got nothing in our graveyard to bring back here, which is a little terrifying. But I mean, I think we just go for it. We actually can still get Soren down here, which is helpful. Uh, so we'll destroy all creatures. We'll see what they hit off of the AO. We do get some damage in as well. Or is this the gain life trigger? I'd always forget which one it is. Um, but we'll see. This is a long game, actually. Uh, I mean, life game versus control makes a lot of sense. very interested to see what they actually get here we are hanging on to our life but it's not great oh that's really bad okay uh we'll auto pay this uh and what this does give us is a blocker <laughs> uh which isn't necessarily the best but it's something uh and it does have lifelink so again we are gonna hopefully draw ourselves into something here but we are uh in rough shape at the moment um yep yep <laughs> yeah this is gonna be a rough one we kind of got unlucky not drawing anything in the first like good long time uh we didn't get any good planeswalkers nothing for a very long time here so just kind of unfortunate but it is what it is i mean you can't help it they're gonna be able to get this up to a indestructible massive massive thing here very quickly uh yep 
all right i mean their deck is definitely just going off here there's really nothing we can do about it uh yep we have to i think block here gains ourselves it puts us back up to that 16 life total which i do think is worth it um and at this point what we can do is plus that soren to draw us a card and hopefully get something but again this is indestructible now so like there's really <laughs> There's nothing we have well actually no i'm sorry shadows verdict would do it um bulky is good but not necessarily gonna solve the problem let's see what we can draw we'll reveal sure <laughs> it's not all that helpful um so this does actually exile this which is useful because that's gonna just kill us um <laughs> so we literally like have to do that I now wish we had actually just minus the Soren, um, but it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we are not long for this world. They've got 57 life at this point, so I, I don't know that there's much we can do. Um, interesting game, though. I mean, we have been able to, I will say, we have been able to kind of hang on to this as as imperfect as this game has been i think we've done an okay job of hanging in there despite not having drawn th something for quite a while we did have the invoke despair and again that blood on the snow and shadows verdict really helps but they're kind of short-term answers to the long-term problem and with this ao in particular uh you get that replay value that you don't normally get out of these life gain decks since this was printed this is certainly a big hit for the deck and so uh it is nice to see it because it's a really cool new card and i, I love that but it is obviously a problem for us and here they just get the flying attack in there's nothing we can do all right guys let's move on to game two i know that was a long one we may only get two games in but we're gonna do the best we can to get three all right guys and here we are for game number two this is an interesting hand but i definitely think it's one we can keep the nice thing about the Valky is if we can get it down it's gonna die we know and it's kind of okay because again we've got the blood on the stoves to kind of bring it back uh, and so I am probably just going to run this out. Looks like potentially another mono white life gain deck. A little annoying for sure, but that's okay. Uh, that, that hive is actually really good for us. It is going to guarantee the, uh, the Soren for us, which is great. Which of these are we more likely to hate? Um, I actually think it's this. Um, yeah, I think that's the better pick. That one, uh, uh, the Voice of the Blessed is very good, don't get me wrong, but this does basically the same thing. It just doesn't have the top end, uh, but it also smooths out their draws, and I don't really want to give them that opportunity. Um, so I think I'm happy to let this happen. Kind of surprised they didn't attack in there, but that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just do this, and uh, we'll see what we get. Another Warlock class, or... I suppose it's warlock class i really wish the auto tapper hadn't tapped in the way that it did that was kind of annoying um but can't help it uh we'll see how this actually ends up going this lulf is probably going to be pretty important for buying us some time here so we can get uh the the voice of the blessed blocked if nothing else um i would love an i absolutely love a shadows verdict right now uh that would be massive for us uh, again, that Warlock class can help us get there, which is really good, but we'll see how this actually goes. Uh, so they can give Vigilance to something with a 1-1 counter on it. They can also use up that Snakeskin Veil. You know, whoa, no, that's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see if they force that Snakeskin Veil. I'm actually kind of interested to see if they do. It's like not. And that's fine. I'm okay with them getting rid of that. They get this Moon Dancer back, but again, we're playing to the outs of the Shadows Verdict, I think, anyway at this point. Uh, and so I kind of just want them to play little things like that. All right. Um, so we can do that, or we can Warlock class and Eye Witch. I think we go this route and start getting the Life Link uh, going for us here. I think that can be a very big thing for us so let's go this route i've got a lot to learn on these uh mono black control decks guys one thing i want to point out also um because i do get some comments every once in a while that are like oh man you really sucked with this deck or whatever first of all thanks i know uh but second of all the this channel is about having fun with a lot of different decks that's why we play a different deck every single day 
Uh, and I know that that sounds like a lot, and that obviously means that I don't have the opportunity to just sit down and like really get good with a single deck. However, um, the point of this channel is specifically to test out a bunch of different stuff, see what we can do, and hopefully have some fun with it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. We are just here to have a good time and learn some different decks. Now, that does mean I am going to suck sometimes. <laughs> Uh, and so it's just something to keep in mind that, yes, I do know that, and that's okay. Uh, that's not really the point. Um, I think we go this route, uh, so we can get these little 2-1 reachers out. Again, we're trying to long-term get as much value as we can, and so spitting out these creatures and buying ourselves some time buys us time to get that sweeper that we are going to need to kind of deal with this board presence. Uh, again, this... Uh, these little two ones are very expendable for us, so it really doesn't matter if they die. Um, we're kind of okay with that. Again, would love a Shadow's Verdict at this point, uh, or even a Blood on the Snow. Either one would be fine. I would rather, I think, have the Shadow's Verdict just to exile everything, uh, because that gets around this little the escort thing. Um, very annoying card for sure in these decks, but it's very good. Okay. So they do have that snakeskin veil up, so we are aware of that. Um, the question is, what do we want to block here? I think it's that. Um, they're going to kill this anyway, but I think what we need to do is get rid of as much as we can. Um, I guess we don't have to block here, but that's fine. So what they're going to do is... Well, this still dies, so why did they do that? That was a bit of an odd move. I'm not really sure why they used the snakeskin veil um, if they weren't going to use the escort, but that's cool by me. Um, that works great, actually. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. If we can get that sweeper off the top, um, I will reveal that since it really doesn't matter that much. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's throw out that eye witch. Um... And I think the move is the Warlock class. And then we just kind of wait. We've got that Deadly Dispute up. Uh, but this is kind of shields up for us, right? So right, right now, what we're trying to do is dig, trade off, and dig. And that's all we can really do. That is a very scary card. So now we absolutely need like a Shadow's Verdict or something along those lines. But thankfully, again, we did shut off at least their life gain on the board this this does gain life, obviously, but long term, we've got some solutions for it, so we'll see if we can get through. Looks like they're just going to attack with that. That's fascinating. Okay. So, what we can do... So, I actually think we just let this happen. So that's going to give us the necrotic fumes that we need to get rid of this Harbinger, uh, which I think is very important. Um, the question is, do we Deadly Dispute here? I think we do. Uh, we'll sacrifice this. And I'll give that minus one to the Escort, just to get rid of something again. It's not necessarily going to be a big, impactful thing, but it does force them to get rid of it, so they don't necessarily have anything here. And there we go, we got the Blood on the Snow. That's actually really big for us, because now we can just get Lolf back as well. Uh, so, let's do it. Let's destroy all creatures. They don't have the indestructible again. That's why that deadly dispute was so important for us. Um, let's go ahead and get Lolf down. Uh, we'll do this. And there we go. We finally got the win. Wow, what a, what an interesting couple games. Uh, we're gonna end up, I think, having to cut it here, guys. Unfortunately, we will jump into a little wrap-up really quick, but we just, these games are very long, and so I'm very sorry we only got two in, but let's talk about this deck. All right, so Mono Black Super Friends. Now, keeping in mind, this is just a small variation on the general Mono Black control that we have seen a good bit now, and we're actually seeing a couple of different variations of just that list in general. A lot of them do not run Volky. Uh, that is a personal choice that I just really like to bolt, and so I thought I'd give it a shot here. Um, I think it was okay. I think the other versions of Mono Black control seem to be more streamlined. If I were running this list again, uh, I think I would try and run a little bit more on the sweeper end 
uh, because there is just so much on the best of one ladder at the very least that is just life gain or aggro of some kind. And you saw that. I mean, we got back to back mono white life gain um, and they're very good decks. So obviously you're going to see them. But I think this deck has the tools. It's just sometimes a bit challenging to get to it. I think we played a lot better in that second game where we were able to kind of just hold them off, hold them off, hold them off until we were finally able to get that blood on the snow. And that really sets us apart. I mean, that's where we can just start to really not not just stabilize, but then start to take over immediately. That really helps you kind of flip the game in your your favor. Uh, all that to say, though, I do like the deck. I think it's, it's, it's fun to try and play with these super friends aspects. It's not something we get to see a lot in standard, especially not at high level standard. Uh, and so I don't expect this to be a high level deck, but I do think it's a fun one to try uh, and encourage you to give it a shot, if, especially if you've already been playing mono black control. This is a small variation just to test out, just to see if you enjoy it. But all that to say, guys, I enjoyed this one. I really hope you guys did. Again, we'll have our giveaway announcement later on today, so I do encourage you to check that out when it goes live. But with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I love you all very much, and I'll see you again very soon.